Hi, have you ever had a dead car battery and you couldn't start your car? Well, brilliant! My car battery is fine for now. And I'll be but fine. What if your car battery was dead and you had your mobile phone on you? Were you able to charge your battery using your phone? What you babbling about? I can't run on that puny ass little sh a common cause of losing charge is leaving one of the lights on in your car like the ceiling light or failing to fully close your trunk and that leaves the trunk light on or accidentally connecting the heating element of your electric stove across the battery and leave it there just turning on the instruments other lights hazard lights turn on the headlights fully on measuring the current draw what 27 to 35 amps this will drain the battery in less than two hours. Under so much load, the battery has dropped to around 11.8 volts. Let's allow the battery to discharge to no less than 10 and a half volts under load and then I'll try to charge it with my phone. What? Hell no! Previously, I had charged and jump started my car using AA batteries and super capacitors, but the easiest would be to use your phone. Nowadays, everyone has one of these on them. Of course, none of these tricks works on an electric EV vehicle. All you need is to cut a USB charging cable and expose and connect the red and black power lines from your phone to the car battery and energy flows from a higher level to a lower level. Don't leave me this way, darling. I can't survive discharging all my juice from every hole I have. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay, let's check the voltage. Six volts? No! It discharged too fast! <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely dead. <sighs> okay, nine and a half volt with no load. Okay, it's not super low. I hope I didn't damage the battery. Now we just connect the phone's USB power to the... Oh, f what? Sh f that left more to be desired. A discharged car battery is still pretty damn tooting strong. But in general, I made three mistakes. First one, I think I connect the wires backwards. I didn't pay attention. Should have used the diode. Second, I was wrong to say energy flows from an environment of higher energy to the lower one. The car battery had less stored energy but was at a higher voltage level compared to the phone, so it would end up charging the phone, not the other way around. Same as how thermal energy flows from hot to cold, not necessarily from a container with higher thermal energy to a lower energy container. It's about energy density, not total energy. And third mistake, I shit my pants. Anyway, we take a new phone and pumps its battery charge into the car battery by designing a circuit to raise its voltage. And for that, we need an inductor and a bunch of other components. I designed a circuit. It looks like this. I'll talk about it later in the video. For now, I'm more excited to revive the car battery. Otherwise, we are stuck here in the wilderness. Or you can take the bus home. Oh, you can take the bus home. Let's go check it. Okay, no mistakes. First, I disconnect the battery terminal because my charger only delivers around 0.3 amps and if I accidentally have anything on on the car, it'll suck my tiny current and the battery doesn't get charged. We connect the battery voltages to the circuits. This will be the current that charges the battery and that's the juiceless voltage of the no-load battery at around 10.4 volts. I plug in my phone and bang that indicates that the phone is powering the circuit and now i enable the circuit there 340 milliamps is going into the battery start the timer and my phone is at around 100 percent it is 99 percent 
So I let it run for 15 minutes. That should give me enough charge for one crank. Let's see what happens. The reason I said 15 minutes is that since from my past test, the crank draws an average of 200 amps for less than one second, which is 200 amp seconds divided by 0.3 amps the phone can provide means that I have to charge the car battery for at least around 670 seconds or more than 11 minutes for one crank worth of juice. I'll just let it charge for 15 minutes. Battery voltage is very slowly rising. I mean, it's just 300 milliamps. What do you expect? There you go. 15 minutes of 300 milliamp current into the battery and the voltage barely rose. Let's disconnect the phone. Was that enough juice for one crank? And the cell phone charge only dropped by 11%. And we shall start the engine. Wasn't enough. I think I over discharged the battery. Let's give it some more charge. My phone definitely has enough charge to give it more. The engine turned a little bit though. Enable the circuit. Let's go. Let's run it for 30 minutes. I want to give my phone a good chance at one successful crank. 30 minutes passed. The battery voltage is barely higher at 10.74 and the battery of the phone is at 66%. Just one successful crank. Okay. It was almost there. It turned twice. <laughs> okay, I'll just leave it. I shouldn't have discharged the battery that far down. One more time. Every unsuccessful charge pulls a ton of the energy I put into the battery with so much pain and suffering. This time I'll just let it run longer. Let me also pump the maximum current I can draw from my phone into the battery. Oops, I tripped the overcurrent protection of the cell phone. Let's restart it. Okay, around 350 milliamps. Only 4% left on the phone, and our voltage is almost at 11 volts. There. Cell phone died. All I need is one successful crank. Let's see. <laughs> and all it needed was the full charge of the phone and the battery voltage already jumped to 13 and a half volts as soon as the car turns on it pumps so much current into the battery that everything is fine now so it is possible to revive your car using your phone <laughs> Same as how it is possible for you to revive and learn new knowledge thanks to my sponsor, Brilliant. Hey! No, sit down and listen. You are a smart person, but every one of us processes different information differently. And yet, there is nothing stopping you from learning what you need to learn, except perhaps the kind of teacher you get. Brilliant is a teacher you need and deserve. Everyone learns much better by enjoying the process, interacting with the information you are given and seeing the results through examples and problem solving. And when you have given up on your ability to say, learn math, boom, suddenly you feel like you were made for math. Trust me, I've seen that happen multiple times. Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons designed for this purpose on math, science, and computing, so you won't have to memorize complex formulas and theories, but learn how to arrive at those conclusions and build the intuition to do it over and over again. Try Brilliant for free visiting brilliant.org slash electroboom. You have everything to gain, and Brilliant personalizes your learning, builds the foundation you need, to arrive at the peak of the knowledge you are seeking and keep learning at your own convenience at 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription using my link. Never miss a chance to learn. Okay, so I was pretty lucky the car started at all. Let me... Yes, 
The car needs an average of 200 amps for around one second for one crank, which is around 2400 joules of energy. And the phone, even charging a 10 volt battery at 0.3 amps for 15 minutes, provides 2700 joules, which is more than one crank. But that only works if your battery is missing precisely one crank. My car battery is a 55 amp hour one, meaning you can draw 55 amps from a full battery for one hour before it is considered discharged. And that's almost 2.4 million joules, almost a thousand cranks worth. So imagine if I was over discharging such a huge battery at 20 amps and at say 10 volts, just a one minute discharge time oversight would cost me five cranks worth of charge my poor phone would have to put back in. And I'm sure I was a few minutes late. And it didn't help that I stopped the charge and did multiple failed cranks. My phone that has a 3900 milliamp hour 3.7 volt battery, and that's a fresh battery, could provide 52,000 joules that, say, at 90% circuit efficiency, should get you around 20 cranks worth of charge. So if you leave your phone to charge the car for a long period from the start, it should eventually pull the car out of death. Now, I was going to provide a detailed explanation of my boost DC to DC switching converter circuit I made, but then I realized there is so much information, I can just make a very good Electroboom 101 video out of it, explaining buck and boost converters in better detail. So subscribe for that. So here's a speedrun for now. Our goal is to pump charges from a lower 5V USB voltage to a higher 12V battery voltage. And for that, we need to switch an inductor. Inductor charges with current when the switch is on. And when the switch is off, its voltage jumps up, turning a diode on and pouring charges into the 12V battery. We switch the switch with a MOSFET transistor using a PWM signal. My circuit is powered through a USB decoy board that tricks the phone to turn its USB power on at 5 volts. I create a triangular-ish wave using a Schmidt trigger circuit, which I compare to a DC voltage to adjust the PWM duty cycle that drives the MOSFET. The DC comes from a combination of sensing the input current and a tunable DC voltage. So this circuit regulates the input current to a fixed level to avoid both the current dropping as the car battery voltage changes and excess draw from the phone which causes the phone USB power to shut down as you saw earlier. Oops. Thanks for having proper protection, phone. Don't worry if it all feels complicated. I'm going to expand it nicely in my next Electroboom 101 video. Make sure to watch all the Electroboom 101 series so far so you'll understand better what I'm talking about. Subscribe and ring the bell.